Hi, I'm Jim Shaw from the Colonial Times Magazine and from Lex Media. Uh, here today on Wednesday, April 15th, um, I was talking with our, with our this afternoon's guest uh, a little bit earlier about something that reminded me that today was tax day. So uh, I'm, I'm glad, you know, we're, we're somewhat relieved from that. Um, and uh, I, I do appreciate hearing this. I felt a little better. So with me today is uh, select board member Susie Barry. Um, who is a longtime member of the selectmen of the, the, the select board um, and uh, a former chair of the select board as well. I'm, I'm going to keep saying it so often, Susie, that it's just going to become part of everything I say, select board, select board. Um, anyway, but thanks for the reminder because I, I was feeling a little blue today because we got some bad news earlier about a good friend of ours. And then um, to be reminded that I didn't have to pay taxes today was actually a, a, a nice thing. So. Anyway, welcome. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Jim. It's great to be here today. It's always good when you can put a little bit of good news in with everything else that's going on yeah. in, in the world today. Right. Well, the, the COVID number that we were talking about before uh, just jumped up only one since yesterday, which is, which is a good thing. I don't know what accounts for that, but that's, uh, we'll take it. Um, what do you have there for, um, for a number today? So, also, uh, so the number that we have today is 151. Um, mm -hmm. Yesterday, the number was 150, so we're not really sure why it's only one. I would certainly not read anything mm -hmm. into it only being one, um, mm -hmm. but that's the number that the town was provided with this morning. Yeah, you mentioned it could be a, the holiday weekend or something. Maybe they didn't do testing on a certain day or, or what. It, that's it could be a lot of different things. So, mm -hmm. But um, we still want to encourage people to, to continue to keep the distance. That's like the number one message. You know, it's, it's like you, when you tell somebody, don't slow down before you cross the finish line when you're in a foot race. It's the yeah. same thing here. You know, you just you want to continue. Um, stay off the fields, right? The town met, and they've actually become a little bit more rigid about really encouraging people to stay off our, the recreation fields as a group, right? Yes. So um, uh, the police department is increasing their patrols of the fields to check and make sure that people aren't out there engaging in any type of organized sport. Um, the basketball hoops do have something placed over them so that you can't actually make a basket. Um, mm -hmm. The ball can't get in, so you should not be playing basketball either. Um, Lincoln, uh, up at Lincoln Field, they have restricted the parking, uh, so you cannot get into the inner parking lot. There is a signboard there. However, mm -hmm. nevertheless, when the town manager drove by the other day, there was a baseball game going on and a soccer game. Um, mm -hmm. And we really, really, really need the community's help with this. The only right. way we're going to get out of this is if we can all pull together, you know, and if it's one thing that we can do in this town and in this community and in New England, we're hardy New Englanders, we can pull together for a common cause and, and we've really got to come together on this one. Right. I mean, it's really not asking for much given the severity of what we're dealing with. And I saw that on Saturday too. I, I drove by on Saturday and I was amazed to see the number of people that were, you know, um, on the fields engaged in this active play with, with, you know, small groups. Um, so, you know, we've, I know the town has been asking nicely and politely for a long time. So uh, getting a little bit more stern about it, I think is probably necessary, but you know, hopefully people will, will, will get it eventually. It's so important. You know, you just, it doesn't take much. Um, people are carriers and they don't even know it. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. people get exposed to it and it, and it, and it doesn't take long. Um, I wanted to to mention, you know, you and I spoke about this earlier. We lost a very, very good friend to the town of Lexington, our longtime um, head football coach, uh, Bill Ty, uh, who uh, would, would have been 96 in June, um, succumbed this morning at around 3.30 in the morning. And uh, he actually was starting to do a little better. He was diagnosed last week. Um, he, was, he did not keep that secret. Uh, his son asked for prayers. We put it out there. Uh, a lot of folks on Facebook and other places were out there asking for those prayers. And um, so, uh, you know, this morning he did go quietly and it's, it's really sad. We've lost a giant. And um, the sad part is we just don't know. You can't make plans for, you know, for paying the tributes and respect, you know, maybe a memorial service sometime down the road, but these things get, get put on hold. And uh, so many people, I've been on the Facebook site, you know, looking at the comments and hundreds and hundreds of comments and just, um, you know, but as you know, um, Coach Ty, he touched generations of families in this town. 
in a profound way. He was a gentleman, a true gentleman, a, a true friend and mentor to, to those he coached. Yeah. So, you know, my sympathies to his family and to, to you and to your family, Jim, I know that he was mm-hmm. close to you and, and to your brother, Chuck, who I went to school with, you know, the coach was at the high. So I graduated high, Lexington high school in 1984. Coach was there when I was there. I had him for one of my gym classes. Um, mm-hmm. And he was, you know, he said he was a giant. I would say he was a gentle giant. He yep. was just truly a very humble and kind, you know, he, he kind of wanted to come across as being gruff, but he really wasn't. He was like a big teddy bear. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he was a very special, special person who nurtured people that he probably doesn't even realize that he did over all those years in terms of right. the way that he approached life and the way that he approached teamwork and team building and all of that. So it, it is, it's a great loss for our community. You know, we're very fortunate over the years that we did have mm-hmm. him as chief marshal for one mm-hmm. of our parades. Um, for both, actually. Last- we, he was a veteran's uh, marshal and the chief marshal for the Patriot State Parade. Yeah, and for his recent mm-hmm. birthday, the Board of Selectmen, you know, issued a proclamation for him in recognition right. of all that he's done over the years. Not just in, you know, the bulk of it in Lexington, but in other communities as well. I mean, mm-hmm. he was truly, truly a gentle giant, a very humble man. They do not make them like that anymore. And he coached, yeah. he coached among others, two United States senators. He coached Ed Markey, and he uh-huh. also coached Scott Brown in Wakefield. Oh, they wow. Coached, they coached Markey in, in Malden and Brown in... Um, in Wakefield, and then yeah. he then he came to Lexington, and um, just you know he's such a he has legions of of just of followers, people who loved him. Um, you know, I would go to these every year. My brother and um, Jay Scary and a couple of others mm-hmm. would organize an annual birthday party, and the people who would turn out they would come as far away as California for some of these events to pay respect and. Um, but again, that's the kind of guy he was. He's going to be sorely missed. And I'm sure at some point soon we'll figure out how we'll be able to, you know, memorialize him. Um, you know, so uh, I know next month we won't have time to do it in this month's issue of the Colonial Times. We'll, we'll probably have some mention of it. But next month we'll, we'll, we expect to have a multi, multiple page tribute to, uh, to the coach. So anyway, yeah. God, you know, God, you know, I, I, I hope uh, God looks good upon him and takes takes him into his 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 family his kingdom and he's up there with so many other people he's he had he had lost so many he lost several of his children and of course his wife before him uh-huh. so um he's his family is little by little getting back together yeah yeah and he had such a great smile and a good laugh too you yeah. know he, he really he really will be left missed he had a great he had a great laugh and you know he had a steel trap memory i was constantly amazed just last season i would sit with him in the football booth watching the home games because he would come because my brother chucky is, is still the voice of the Minutemen on the mm-hmm. football games and um he would people would come up and knock on the door and come in and he would remember what year they were what position they played who their wow. brothers were who their friends were you know, and he would reminisce. And, and, and there was nobody whispering in his ear. He just knew all of this stuff. And um, when you when you coach the little, literally thousands of kids that he has, and you can mm-hmm. remember them all, the, all of their names and their families, it's just it it, you, it would blow me away. So, um, at any rate, he's uh, he's gone, but he'll not be forgotten. I can assure I can assure yeah. you that. So, anyway. Um, Moving on to uh, some other topics we talked about, small business. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I know, yeah. you know, it's a lot of small businesses have been applying for a lot of these plans and programs, and some of the banks in Lexington are participating with the SBA. I, I know Eastern Bank. I know um, uh, uh, Enterprise Bank. And Enterprise, then, uh, yep. And then uh, – a TD Bank is also a, a big, a big bank for uh, small business. Um, but if folks are finding it hard to navigate some of these things, and um, so they're, they're kind of like turning to the to their own resources. I understand and taking things upon themselves and sort of reaching out to the generosity of people in the community. So I understand a couple of businesses have started GoFundMe pages and are doing fairly, you know, moderately successful on them um, and uh, we just thought we'd point that out. Why don't you tell us about that? Sure, so um, we were recently made aware of um, two businesses in town and there might be more, but we've so far only heard of two that have mm-hmm. started GoFundMe pages. The first one being Walden Framer, which is located on Mass Ave in East Lexington in the same building where um, Booz's Liquor is. 
Mm -hmm. um, and they're, you know, they're very well beloved in their community in the East Lexington and in Arlington community. Um, mm -hmm. And so they're raising some money that way. And the other one is our very own Lexington venue. I mean, how mm -hmm. many towns still have a movie theater right in their downtown? Um, right. And the Lexington venue is trying to raise some money as well to stay afloat. We've mm -hmm. also seen multiple appeals from small, the small businesses in town looking for people to buy gift cards. You right. buy a gift card now, you can buy it online, usually on their website, and use it when they reopen. You know, mm -hmm. We've seen that for Tricon Sports, for Rankatories, for Abbott's, you know, any of the restaurants um, that they're doing that. And some right. of the, the businesses you can still actually call and tell them what you're looking for and see if they have it and do a curbside pickup. I mean, last right. week being home now, working all the time, I'm like, you know, my slippers are getting pretty they were not giving me the support I need at my age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I called Eric Michelson and said, you know, do you have, he calls me Yo Bigfoot. I have a very large foot. Um, <laughs> do you have any Yo Bigfoot slippers in stock? And he did. And it was very easy curbside pickup. And it was exactly what I was looking for, you know, mm -hmm. and I got it same day. Didn't have to wait for delivery. Didn't send my money out of town. You know, it was, it's great. Mm -hmm. So do not at all forget that we have small businesses and you can find almost everything you want right. in town. It's just a little more harder to find it right now. Yeah, you have to put a little bit more of an effort in, but you know, Bonafine Jewelers, they're you know they they have a very beautiful and active website. I went on their website just this morning actually, and um, boy, the, what a selection they have that they're showcasing right on their website, and that mm -hmm. and they do have a mechanism to contact them directly on the website, so you could send them a message. And Joe Bonafine, I'm sure, will be responsive. He always he always is. He's been doing business in in Lexington for over 30 years. Uh, up at Countryside, which is uh, right off Woburn Street at the corner of um, Lowell Street. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, there are so many businesses in town that really need our support. People have been buying gift cards. I know that um, I understand that some of the Chamber of Commerce gift cards have been have been sold. And um, those you can use at any member business. And those businesses, as soon as they send the, the gift cards back to the Chamber for redemption, we send a check right out to them. So, oh, nice. they're, you know, they get their money right away. Mm -hmm. um, which is helpful, but, you know, uh, and some folks are doing very in innovative things. And uh, it, it's worth mentioning companies like uh, Il Casali, um, you know, the restaurant in Lexington. Um, Filippo de Magistris um, is uh, one of the brothers. He actually lives in Lexington with his family. But they had somebody buy a gift card for in, the, in the amount of $5,000. And wow. so he was so moved by that. What he did is he decided to create a fund and and decide to dedicate i think up through patriots day um all of the revenue he gets from his um from his gift card sales half of it um is going into a fund for his employees so he's nice. been able to help his employees in in uh in ways that he didn't think he was going to be able to so mm -hmm. you know it's all the generosity is there people can continue to do it you know, it's it's kind of a double-edged thing for for businesses. Not you know, we do need the encouragement, and I say we because I'm a small business. The Colonial Times, mm -hmm. we're in our 25th year, and we operate as a small business. It's really just a partnership between Laurie and I. Um, we do have a you know a staff of writers and all of that, and we've built it up over the years. But we're a small business, just like everyone else. And you know, we see we appreciate the support. You know, I've been very fortunate in in that most of my advertisers have been able to hang in there with. Um, and it really makes a difference. It, you know, we're able to keep our page count up and not have to reduce the size of the publication, which means we can continue to get a good amount of information out to people. Um, and then, of course, then this is the side of, well, businesses trying to, they're getting frustrated sort of navigating the SBA processes. And it's just, um, so I think people need to have patience, you know, just while we continue to go through this, people need to just keep in mind, you know, as much as you can support your local businesses I, and i and i and I, I bring it down to a simple slogan it's not or, or maybe not a slogan as much as it is just sort of an observation is that you know when you watch your kids play little league ball it's not the burlington mall that's on the back of their no. or amazon <clears throat> or you know those major major corporations that are doing business online it's the the the, the mom and pop stores the local businesses in Lexington that, that's are the go-to people and they always mm -hmm. say yes whether whether they're looking for something for a, a silent auction or the or little league or the soccer leagues are looking to 
for support for their uh, for their teams. You know, so keep that in mind when you're making decisions to uh, to to shop. Go, you know, go local. It doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. So don't just yeah. assume because they're closed that you can't give them a call and they can't help you out curbside. Yeah. 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 And we might mention sort of closing out that segment, the the fun for Lexington. It's always worth mentioning. I know that you guys have got the fun for Lexington and um, Takeda was very generous with a $250,000 mm-hmm. contribution. And I know other contributions have been coming in and people can now give online. So yeah, let so, people know where they can do that. Sure. So um, Takeda, who's located right here in Lexington, gave a very generous donation to the town of $250,000. That's in one particular fund um, mm-hmm. that's being designated to help people who are having you know issues surrounding COVID-19. Um, and then the fund for Lexington, which is also going to, I believe we're in our 25th year or 30th year. Um, any donations made to the fund for Lexington from now through September 1st will be designated strictly to um, helping people with COVID-19 relief. And that could be for rents or mortgages or utility payments, um, mm-hmm. food. Um, mm-hmm. And there is, you can now donate online. So if you go to the town website, you will find a link in there. Uh, just search fund for Lexington and you can donate online to donate to that program. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, one thing we are hearing, we're starting to hear a lot about is um, food is becoming an issue for people. So the food pantry also needs, the Lexington Food Pantry also needs support. Right. Great. And there are other organizations stepping up, like the the two Cal organizations, Cal, Cal, and then Cal Lex. Um, I know that um, Cal, CA, you know, the the Chinese American Association of Lexington has been working to, um, to raise money and make masks and make masks available, but I also know that Cal Lex has also stepped up in a, a profound way too. Tell us, tell us about that. Sure. So both organizations, we are so fortunate to have these organizations within our community, have donated tens of thousands of masks um, within the Lexington community, but also within Greater Boston. Um, mm-hmm. So they have made donations to our uh, first responders, to our fire department, our police department, to our, our public works employees who have to be out there working. They've also mm-hmm. donated to um, the, the hospitals in Boston, to doctor's offices, to nursing homes, all right here within our vicinity. And we are so fortunate that they are stepping up and helping us during these difficult times. They've been able to source masks from different places, from China and other places. Um, and so, you know, it, it's neighbors helping neighbors. And mm-hmm. again, it speaks to that we need to come together. We're not going to be able to fight this if we fight it independently or ignore it because this Mm -hmm. is a disease that does not discriminate. We need to work together. We're so much stronger when you work together. And some of this equipment's finding its way over to places like Pine Knoll Nursing Center, um, Care One, and other places. So some of it's actually staying right here in Lexington. So Mm -hmm. it's it's much needed and much appreciated. Um, Grocery stores. Um, I know you you, you made the (laughs) the valiant effort this morning, you know, uh, to get out there. Um, I tried. didn't quite make it. <laughs> I tried. So, so, so um, I was trying to, I wanted to shop at Burlington Market Basket and I went over and, you know, Market Basket is only allowing 125 people in that store at a time. And so um, the line, it double wrapped. It went the length of the wow. store and then wrapped around again. And I said, you know what? I don't want to be late for my meeting with Jim. So I will go I home. appreciate that. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> and I will try it later. It's, it's just, a, it's kind of a different way mm-hmm. of life when you have to think long and hard about when you're going to go shopping because right. we're so used to you you pull up you park your car you walk and you take what you want off the shelf you check out and you leave mm-hmm. and i think we've never really stopped to live with that and how what a luxury and may, you know and the word luxury might sound right well you know no no it is we take things for granted i remember the closest yeah. thing in my memory that i can recall was gas rationing back in the, yep. in the mid-1970s when they, you, if you, you, you were able to buy gasoline based on your license plate. So if you had yep. an odd number plate, you could go on certain days. If you had an even number, meaning the number ended in an even number, you go on certain days. Yep. And it was back, it was a scary time, but people weren't getting sick. So the no. component, adding in the whole thing about the coronavirus, which is driving this whole thing, it makes it even, it makes it 10 times more frightening for people. Um, yeah. So for, I think people can safely say it's something they've never, ever experienced. So, And I did say, I told you this morning as I was coming to my office, um, just before Wilson's opened at 8, from 8 to 9, I know they do the, 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 the seniors or the 60 and older, because there are some 60-year-olds mm-hmm. who don't consider themselves senior citizens. 
Um, I know a few of them myself. I'm married to one, but shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, but the uh, but I was amazed to see the line. You know, everybody observing the six foot distance, but it was all the way back to meeting and back to the back of the parking lot yep. just to get in there at opening time. So. Um, you know, people are doing what they have to do, um, and uh, you know we're going to get through it. It's it seems frustrating now, but um, it, you know there will become a time. You know, hopefully not in the too distant future that we can get together um, and begin to uh, you know sort of have life back to normal. And sort of getting ready to close on that note, we should talk a little bit about. Um, uh, Patriot Saves festivities because it is the weekend and I specifically wanted to sort of uh, approach the subject with you because of your longtime association with the Celebrations Committee as a chair and yeah. a longtime member. So it's some interesting things are coming up. I know that the Historical Society has got a weekend of events planned, virtually speaking. Um, mm -hmm. I, are you in tune with some of that? Yes, yeah, so the Historical Society is doing a bunch of virtual events through their website, um, lexingtonhistory.org. Um, you can see the reenactments. They've done some beautiful virtual tours of all their houses, the Hancock Clark House, the Buckman Tavern, and the Monroe Tavern. Um, they've also got a scavenger hunt on there, which I haven't yet looked at, but I love a good scavenger hunt. Um, and Lex Media Gym, if I'm not mistaken, is going to do some interesting things on Monday as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're going to be, we're going to be um, running the... Um reenactment at 5 30. so for those true traditionalists that are used to getting up that early or if you're not if you've never been there or gotten up that early morning and made the trek over here's a chance to get up at 5 30 and join literally hundreds of other people in lexington who will be up at that hour enjoying coffee and watching um the reenactment it's a great family event uh, it'll be fun for everybody to come together and do it so we're trying to sort of you know adhere to some of the traditions of lexington and then mm. we'll be running a parade at two o'clock which is the normal start time um so we'll we'll go back into the archives we'll find one from a, from a nice sunny day um and uh maybe one of the longer ones because we have had some years where they're longer than others so uh, like mm -hmm. you mentioned 2013 with them we have the 300th anniversary of the of the founding of the town um the uh so the uh you know the, the it'll, it'll be fun i know and then the colonial times is sending out photos uh this in this issue we've identified some great photos from people from um you know past uh, people from from that we've known i elsa sullivan is one that comes to mind oh yeah, yeah. um i have one of her when she's getting her her, her white tricon hat, white and, hat she's, yeah. and she's just she's got her hands out like this you know and just embracing the crowd and you know they're fun and i was able to find some you know some fun photos in the past you know um when uh, gerald ford was here in lexington and uh to celebrate the bicentennial so we're looking through a bunch of that we'll get them up and we'll be we, we expect for the colonial times to land in homes on saturday so look for that. And that'll have all the information of all the other events that are going on. And Monroe Center has got a virtual parade that they're putting together, I think, with mm -hmm. Lex Media as well. So there are a lot of, a lot of great events. So, you know, go, go to LexingtonHistory.org. Go to LexMedia.org. You'll get all the information you need. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not going to be the same as, as, you know, sort of being, being there. But you know what? We're a resilient community. We'll make the best of it, and we'll make it a big, big celebration uh, in 2021. So, yeah, you just yeah. got to make your pancakes at home this year. That's right. Make pan yeah. well. That's it. Make pancakes and eat them at 5:30, uh, yeah. watching the reenactment. Yeah. So there you go. Good. Good. Great idea. Uh, we, would you do me a favor? Run down to Market Basket and get enough pancake mix for everybody. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go <laughs> with mine. <laughs> You want some right. sausage or bacon? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Exactly. The sauce. So well, no, there's never. Be it's, I think it needs to be sausage. Yeah. It's brown always and, sausage. Yeah. Brown and served sausage. So. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. listen. I really appreciate you taking the time, um, and uh, I, I, I wish you the best. I know this has always been a big weekend for you, and um, I know it's hard. You, both you and Doug, I know, have, have been involved with organizing events for Patriot's Day for so long. So I know it's particularly yeah. hard for you guys. So, but, uh, you know, the best thing for everybody is stay home, stay safe. I say that with you and I, and I, you know, you were telling me about how your youngest son turned a certain age. I don't want to give it away, but I, I, I remember when he was standing basically up to your knee when you were yeah. organizing parades. So boy, I'll tell you, time has, has flown by. So uh, enjoy does. that. 
enjoy that time with your family. Thanks for joining okay. me today and um, uh, have a great weekend and stay safe and give, please give all of our best to uh, all of the berries. Okay? I will. Great. Thanks, and Jim. your mom too. And Marie, our favorite Marie Hill too. Tell Marie we were asking for her. Okay. I will. Good. I will. All right. Stay Thanks well. again. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.